Well, joining us now on This is the Day is Sherry Brownrigg, who is going to talk to us about praying for vocations. And first of all, thanks so much for being with us, Sherry. Thanks for having me, Kevin. I appreciate it. Maybe if you could talk a little bit about the uh, apostolate and then uh, praying for uh, priests. Sure. Uh, the Apostolate is officially called Maria Regina Clary, Mary, Queen of the Clergy. And it was started really out of a burning desire to involve the laity in praying for vocations and for priests, those who have actually had their vocation and have answered the call and said yes. And so the whole project really started when Pope Benedict XVI said, I'm announcing a year for priests. And we said, this is the time to get this started. So since then, we have developed uh, prayer resources. We have books and CDs for praying for priests and praying for vocations, and they've literally gone around the world so far. That's amazing. Yeah, talk about the power of prayer. And I know a lot of people. When, when you talk about vocations, do uh, people suggest maybe going up to a, a person? And have you a thought about this? Or, but. Um, Talk about the person at home, maybe the homebound or yeah. something, and, and the power of prayer and how they can help. Well, it's interesting because you, you talk about the power of prayer. We've had people from all walks of life who have contacted us and said they are just drawn to praying for vocations and for the priesthood. And you have to believe that the Lord is really drawing people, you know, certain people who have that charism to pray in a very, very special way. It's something we all need to do yeah. because this is our church. And, you know, without our priests, we would not have the Eucharist. We wouldn't have many of the other sacraments. So, you know, it's really up to us, the laity, to help to, to support them in this very special way. The homebound, again, speaking of a very special way, they have a beautiful way that they can offer what is happening with them, as well as, as those who are infirm, to pray for priests. But really, you know, you and I and everybody who's listening right now, everyone out there really has a call to pray in some way for the priesthood, even if it's just a little Hail Mary or if it's an entire rosary every day. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk to you, too, about that. And if someone comes, well, how do I pray? How do I pray for priests? Now, tell us a little bit about some of the resources that you have on the website and, and how can people find out the ways in which to pray? Sure. Well, first of all, these books and CDs, whether you're getting Praying for Our Priests or Praying for Vocations, are free. We simply ask for a donation to defray the cost, and you know that's how we keep going. We really felt like we needed to make this available for everyone who's called to pray. And you know, it's easy to start out just with a Hail Mary, or you can have your kids maybe, you know, before the start of Mass, ask them to pray for the priest that is there going to be celebrating Mass at your parish. Variety of different ways you can slip it in. But when you really are called, and you know it, you know, there's, we've heard this. People just know when they're called to do something a little extra to pray for priests or vocations. Doing the rosary, or especially during Lent or Advent, the Stations of the Cross can be really, really, really powerful. Uh, and we have National Vocations Awareness Week uh, taking place in November, too. And what are some of the maybe special ways uh, during this uh, time for people to sort of focus on vocations. Well, this is a great way to really make that commitment to say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to be one that will be a solution to um, maybe increasing vocations within my parish, within the diocese in, I, in which I live, and, and really within the church around the world, because that's how it starts, is not just leaving it up to Father or to the bishop or to someone else to take care of vocations. We all have a part in calling. So pray, first of all, commit, and then ask someone who maybe you might think would make a good priest, you know, kind of yeah. get over your fear of, gee, they're going to think I'm nuts. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask them and say, have you ever thought about that? The worst they can say is, no, I haven't. Yeah. So yeah. good ways to start. Yeah. And, and f for um, people, though, who are thinking about uh, this in terms of how to do go about doing this and, and, and finding out ways in which to do it too. This is a great resource and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you um, sort of got the uh, urge to do this and, and what was it behind uh, you know your feelings and, and what it's been like for you to, to get this yeah. going? Well I have a younger brother who's a priest okay. and having a, a younger brother who's a priest does give you a little bit of an insight. We're the closest together in our family so it gives me a little bit of an insight to maybe some of the different struggles that a priest goes through on a day-to-day -day basis, some of the things that really affect them and where they really could use the help of the laity and um, I'm, I'm a convert and so I really just got this, my call to become a Catholic and to really become a Catholic who follows the faith 
very, you know, very carefully, very devoutly, mm -hmm. um, through the Eucharist and the understanding that that Eucharist really comes from the priest. The, our Lord has given us this priest to allow us to receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity. Without the priest, we would not have the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So that was really the fire that ignited me. And combining that with, with uh, seeing my own brother and his beautiful life as a priest that has its struggles, you know, much more joy than sorrow, um, I just thought that there was something that I could do to really, uh, to really help out. A good friend of mine, Vicki Harrod, was caring for a priest, the last living priest to have worked for Father Flanagan, uh -huh. uh, who founded Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, she was caring for him. He is now 95. Uh -huh. Back then when we started, he was probably, you know, a young 85 or something. <laughs> but but uh, she had the same thing. And so we, the two of us got together and decided to start a cenacal of prayer. And then again, it was when Pope Benedict XVI had started to um, announce that he was going to have the year for priests, that we really put a formal context around Maria Regina Clary and the prayer effort and then came out with these books. But for me, it's just part of what I do every day. I couldn't imagine praying and not praying for priests or vocations and or vocations. Well, we thank you so much for being here. Just quickly too, uh, for people who want to find out more, want to start praying or, or find out some resources, where would they go? Prayingforourpriests.org. You can find everything right there. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you, Kevin. Let's go back to the rest of This is the Day.